welcome back everybody and of course huge welcome to those who just joined as well this is gigabyte challenge number six the round of 32 64 not even sure but it is dream destroyers versus novus potentia the two games we casted of dream destroyers were absolute stomps with pushing strategies but we'll see if this round is a harder challenge for them my name is coacher and joining me is painchy hey as we are going to be having a Dream Destroyers in game number three this time. And as we see the usual bands and picks coming out, we are obviously in the round of 64 right now. And it's worth noting there have actually been a few upsets currently in this game right now. A TCN or have just got knocked out in the same round, being taken out by Balkland Bears, which is actually a really huge upset right there. Uh, Central of Fear, the Turkish uh, team coming in, who usually does pretty well in these events, actually also got knocked out in the same point, getting taken out by a German team I haven't heard of before called Free Wins Team. What? Well, I guess in best of ones, anything can happen. Well, the Balkan Bears, they've been playing together for some time. They consist of high MMR players, so in theory, they have the skills, it's just down to execution as a team. And of course, TCN, man, it definitely is an upset because they're just solid as all hell. But now, well, huh, how do they follow Shadow Shaman? He's already picked once again for Dream Destroyers. Will we see a third game in a row with a Death Prophet? Or do they go for something else to begin with and just aim for the Death Prophet in the second phase? Well, at this point, why not? As in it. The thing you've got, the reason why the death ball strategy is so strong right now is because you can't pick around it, you can't play around it. You can't outdraft a death ball strategy because there's just so many heroes to pick up and ban. You can literally have two teams of death ball plus all five of your bans used for the death ball strategy and you'll still have enough to uh, make it work. Which means even if they, even if they do ban out the death profit or ban out... Uh, a hero like that, they'll just pick up another one. They'll pick up something else that to fits in the exact same role. Oh man, I have to agree with you there. It's just way too hard to draft against push. There's just way too many heroes. And like we saw Dream Destroyers, they weren't even afraid to pick up a Pac-9 in the first game we casted of them. So, if they really want to, they can definitely go for it. Now though, going for a Viper, just solid hero overall. Pretty damn tanky, has increased magic resistance thanks to the corrosive skin, of course, which is nice against both the Skyrath and the Earthshaker. And well, even if he's thrown up against well any mid lane matchup, Viper usually does pretty damn decent regardless. But now, checking out the bands, once again, faces away taken out by Dream Destroyers, and actually the Pagna, banned by Novus Potentia. Well, we, they, we obviously know that it works very well for that pushing strategy, and maybe the Death Prophet is soon to follow. As Dream Destroyers, they're just, you know, currently all these picks that maybe the Earth Shaker first pick, first ban is a uh, first pick is a little bit interesting right there, considering the fact he's generally not picked up that early. Although, he, again, he does do well in terms of just uh, countering that push, using that uh, fissure to slow down attackers and get team fight advantage. Uh, it's. Oh, the Prophet Band. Can't say too surprised. I'm mm -hmm. kind of happy because now we have to see another side of Dream Destroyers. They have to draft absolutely differently now, I think. Yes, they can still go for push, like pick up something like a Nature's Prophet. Maybe even Luna for additional damage or something like that. Actually, I guess Sniper is actually pretty decent in push strategies, I think. Just max out your scatter. Is it scatter shot? Well, the only issue you have with a sniper is it's just so easy to gank, especially compared to a, uh, a death prophet who's, you know, got a bit of tankability behind her, got a bit of speed, got that silence to be able to escape. While a sniper doesn't really have that. If you catch him out, he's done for. Well, Earthshaker definitely would help out in that regard, just getting the long range Fisher down, the initial stun, and then the follow up with a concussive shot. And so, well, the center is the pick for NP. Just solid offlaner overall, although the one game we saw him in today, he couldn't get anything at all accomplished because he just didn't get levels to do so. Yeah, that is one of the issues with Sent there. If he doesn't have a good offlane, if he gets uh, taken out of the XP range, doesn't get a fast blink, he's effectively useless because he needs to walk up to get the stun and the damage off, and there's no hero that does that well. 
Oh, Indy, they don't. And well, now Dream Destroyers. They see a crap ton of just magic burst coming out and lockdown. So actually, I wouldn't mind something like a life stealer again for them this time around. Yes, Ancient Shield still is a threat to him, but the rage would be so good, and feast against Centaur is also pretty damn epic. Or well, anything that goes for a PKB, any hero that just likes to rush PKBs and can still actually dish out the damage anyway. I'd like to see something like that. Yep, I... Uh, basically anything with huge amounts of uh, team fight potential, or just ganking potential, solid, uh, very nice heroes. And w I guess... As far as their own offlaners go, there aren't too many possibilities for them, at least not the common ones. Like Clockwork and Batrider, those two are yet to be picked up here. And Dream Destroyers, I guess they don't even have to pick a traditional offlaner because they could just easily go for an aggressive tri lane, Viper, Shadow Shaman, plus one if they really wanted to. Yeah, there's no reason why they couldn't go for that. So, do you see a Sand King getting picked up? Very aggressive right there. As we're actually seeing the less of the team fight push because of that Death Prophet ban and more, a little bit more just team fight damage and just general stunning and ganking and trying to win the game through that method. I mean, Sand King just. It will be a war of initiation. Who gets it first? Will it be Centaur or Sanking getting his Blink Dagger and then just starting the initiations? Because so often in such games, whoever gets his Blink Dagger earlier and just starts being active on the map probably gets the snowball effect running. Of course, Dream Destroyers, they do have Mass Serpent Wars to help out with objectives after they go for kills or teamfights. So in that regard, I favor them a little bit, but... Three heroes from either side. I really don't favor any lineup at the moment. Well, now, as so we're just seeing solid heroes on both sides, both have that team fight ability. All of them have that uh, nuke damage and gank potential, and that's basically what current uh, the current Dota Better game is about. If it isn't just pure death ball pushing, it's just simply very utility based heroes that can be simply go around ganking and win team fights. Yeah, I know Titan before TI. They used to run like Shadow Shaman and Chantress a lot. I mean, yes, they focused a little bit on getting the objectives down, of course. But like you said, it's not the death ball push. You just have the ability to fight and push at the same time. Which is just... I guess the pushing part of it is just the cherry on top. You drop down the Mass Serpent Wars looking for a fight under the tower anyway. Or something like that. Morph. And well, we see yet another Morphling coming out this time around for Novus Potentia. Yeah, very interesting, especially as to really do what he wants to do, a Morphling does need a lot of farm Tinker. to, uh, you know, get anything accomplished. It's a Tinker gets picked up, and that's more than likely going to get picked up on the Moon as We've been hearing rumors that he's been practicing this in order to be able to give that to his team, and now we're going to be able to see, is it Excalibur levels of Tinker? Oh man, it was banned out, I think, in the last previous two games. So yeah, I'm excited to see that as well, but from those heroes already, I'd be surprised if this game ended as fast as the two previous ones did. No, we are seeing a slower set of picks coming out from both these two teams. A lot of the pushing heroes getting banned out, and although you can still force it after those bands are there, like I said, there's plenty of heroes to do so. You don't have to, so to say. As in, it's often, if you don't have that Tachen or Enchantress player on your team who's very good with those heroes, it does get a little bit weird. Yeah, you definitely shouldn't just go for some heroes because in theory they are good. If you don't have a player or your team isn't just good enough coordinating it, the movements and everything, it may just end up hurting you more than it would benefit uh... you. But now, Storm Spirit Band from Dream, Dream Destroyers just... Makes absolute sense. Storm Spirit is such a great hero against Tinker. And of course, Nova's potential. Well, they go for an Enigma as their last one. So, is this going to be Skyrath mid or Earthshaker mid even? As we do see the Enigma getting picked out, and that's. We have seen Enigma kind of getting picked up a lot more in, uh, you know, various games. And he seems to do okay. One of the few heroes that can still jungle. But it does make their way lanes a bit le weaker. So I'm going to try and save my words. Oh yeah. It's so damn often though I see that up against an Enigma the enemy team just smokes up. Maybe doesn't even smoke but goes for a 5-man rotation through the enemy jungle. 
and just wards up every single camp of the Enigma. Two sentries to get the two first camps on the most left sided camps and just the magic push ward and then that the one ward that blocks the camp and also gives vision to the rune. But we'll see if they do that as they pick up a Bat Rider as their last one. Of course, Bat Rider has the long range flame break to stop the black hole, which is also nice. And just shutting down the Morphling with the lasso before he maybe gets his strength morph or waveform out. But Dream Destroyers, I mean, going into the late game, they have to rely so heavily on this Tinker. As we are going to be finally going into this game, once again with Dream Destroyers, this time on the Dire side. And they're going to be playing, once again, Bloody Nine and the Shadow Shaman, and so on the Viper. And he's going to be going safe lane, looks like. Moon Minder on the Tinker, Bendy on the Sanking, and WWD on that Bat Rider with a cute little bunny as their courier. <laughs> and for Team NP, Android P, playing up on the Enigma with Dale, heading towards the offlane up onto the center of Warrunner, leaving Eplet to play the Earthshaker, Ultra Headshot Paraban, just Paraban, I guess, up on the Skyrath Mage with. Hi, please die, thanks, bye. Playing the Morphling. As we do also see their couriers, not quite as cute, but still cool. Little two-headed fire doggy thing. <laughs> it's important to point out the couriers, to be honest. Oh, it's... I think it's from Star Ladder. Yeah, it's from the Star Ladder courier. Yep, it's really nice, actually. Just like flame going everywhere and... It must be really uncomfortable just to have your mouth on fire like 24 7 though. Uh, indeed. Especially if the top half of your head is like metal or something, or is it the bottom as well? You I tried. Mean, metal, it should start melting if it's like actually burning all the time there. Well, they tried to stop smoking, but it just couldn't have work. Chain smoker, what can you do? But the game is beginning, and just look at the positioning of Bloody Nine here. Being inside the trees as well as Bendy, they want to set up an easy first blood. And with the Bat Rider coming out uh, as an offlaner, this is something that NP is probably not expecting. And this Morphling might be in for a surprise. Just look how deep these two players are, in fact. You literally could not hide deeper into the uh, jungle. This is full on cheese. I half expect one of them to start building two racks and go for a marine rush. Oh, this this is just so smart to mess and Morphling. How deep is he gonna go? I mean, if I saw the Bat Rider, I was like, yeah, no problem. Although top lane, they have this Observer Ward as well, so they haven't spotted out any support yet. And of course, hi, please, die, thanks, bye. Man, that name. Such a mouthful. And now, never mind. The Sticky Napalm stacks are coming in. He has the waveform, though. Can he get the waveform just through the Shadow Shaman? Oh, bloody nine. He just should have waited a little bit. Put the shackles onto Epplet now. Bendy, can he get in range for the Berserk? He has boost of speed, he should be able to catch up. Two stacks of Sticky Napalm slowing him down as well. Oh, the Fisher not there in time, and that will be the first blood going in the favor of the Sand King. That was so close to not working right there. The Earth Shaker coming out at the, right, at the right time, spotting that coming out and giving Morphling the opportunity to escape. But at the same time, he just. As. Whoa! Yeah, I mean, Tinker somehow fell to a level 1, maybe level 2 at the time. Skyrath Mage. I'm pretty sure he was more than likely level 1 at the time. Or well, I guess maybe he was level 2, but that is something that should definitely not happen. And it sets back the Tinker quite a lot there. And that's actually going to give Skyrath Mage a huge advantage right now as Earth Jaker's looking for a kill here onto Sand King. Sand King desperately trying to get away. 28 points of health, but he's got that boost of speed. Going to be able to survive. And the Fisher just isn't going to come up in time. And Bendy's going to get away, but. We're seeing a little bit of resistance coming out from Team NP. Yeah, it's definitely looking good for them. And if you go for the Skyrath Mage mid, you have to have the impact. And of course, since the two camps here weren't blocked up, then Android P, well, he's dropping low actually down to 1 HP. But he can still farm up a little bit. Oh, the miss micro. Man, the micro is not there. One idol and goes down. Will it be a second one as well? Somehow stays alive. Come on, propagate, propagate. Oh, just barely duplicates. But a little bit miss micro by Enigma, so his jungle won't be as fast, but at least he has his soul ring and oh we see more kills. As we see a one for one trade coming out there. Very nice work once again by the Skyrath Mage. Picking up that first kill, the Shadow Shaman was there, but a, a two for a two against one gank turning into a trade is always good for uh, team NP right there. Yeah, it's definitely not bad, Skyrath. 
up to level 5 already, almost 3 minutes into the game as Morphling. Takes a lot of harassment, has magic 6 charges of course, and a waveform to escape if need be. Bendy comes back as well. Eplet, I mean, even if you use the Fisher Batrider, you can just Firefly over it, which is definitely a good thing for the Batrider. As he's trying to trade hits with the Morphling, there's the Fisher coming out. And hi... No, he can't turn around. Man, the turn rate from Sticky Napalm, mean, it's just so horrible. Now, as all this is going on, Enzo, he was the star player, so to say, in both the last two games, playing mid and like Death Prophet, and he's currently basically getting free farm. 15 and 4 against a... Four uh, gates a seven and nil centaur as he's just getting harassed out, and it's interesting to note he got one level in return even against the viper, because a lot of people don't realise this, but that return it also triggers the uh, corrosive skin, basically applying double slow for every single attack. Oh, the Fisher actually already went out, and now Eplet he's in trouble. Shackles actually bloody nine is not going for it yet. The support they wouldn't have been close enough because the wave was pushing in. But, oh, Morphing, now he goes in, the waveform comes out, Android P, can he get the Malphite? Yes, he can. This should be a kill on the Shadow Shaman, as the Fisher comes out, just in case, but now, WWD, Firefly, but he doesn't have enough mana to follow up. So, just a kill for MP, as they actually take the lead, 3-2. to two. Yeah, as we do see the leading kills coming out, and surprisingly, apart from this top lane, which Viper vs. Scent is probably one of the worst matchups in the game. Yeah. You know, it's actually rather equal. Like you said, the matchup isn't made any easier because he leveled up that return, so Corrosive Skin will be there at all times. As Bendy trying to make something up in mid lane, but of course he gets spotted out now, gets pinged as well. Without smokes, it's really hard to set up the kills. But we already see actually two double stacks. Of course, one has Mud Golem, so it's not like Bendy can farm that up. But he can put the second point into Sandstorm after this stack. So, Bendy, 770 gold already, he of course got the first plot as well. But oh, mid lane, once again, Moonmander, he goes down. Paraban, four points into the Arcane Ball, just such high spam ability. And he's just getting caught out by the huge amounts of damage that Raking's doing, but I feel he's trying to uh, play as if he was playing against any other hero. Any other hero, and he'd be fine playing as aggressive, because you could just simply go forwards. Uh, get that laser off and make it the mischance. Means that you won't die, but against the Skyrus Mage, he laughs off your mischance because he just arcane bolts you in the face. Yeah, but. Oh my god. Can you actually believe this? That Moon Yander on a mid lane Tinker, five and a half minutes in, has yet to get his bottle. No. I mean, they, they need to do some heavy stacking here. And of course, Bendy, he wants to farm up the stacks as well. So, Tinker, I mean, Ancients haven't been stacked. And this is going to be such a hard comeback game for them. Yeah, because right now, a lot of their uh, domination in their previous rounds was simply a fact that they turned up and just destroyed and outskilled all of the lanes. And this just isn't happening. The only lane that they're truly winning, so to say, is uh, this top lane. As in, they've lost mid uh, pretty hard right now. And the bottom lane, I'd say, is mostly equal. As in, Batrider's getting what he needs, but so is Morphling. Yeah, the Viper definitely has to start making an impact. Get that early mech, maybe allow that to get them some team fights going. But mid lane, Paraban gets the silence, slow one to Moon Miner, but Bloody Nine is there. Haste rune, actually the shackles come out, tail, activate his ultimate and Moon Miner, he's gonna go down. The Fisher comes in as well, just to help out as double edge, gets the kill on Bloody Nine. And <laughs> at the moment it feels like the Dream Destroyers, they might have their own destroyed. Yes, right now, they're just getting caught out. They're playing as if they were playing against the previous two teams, but this is the round of, uh, I think at this point, 32. Or might be 64. And this is hardly bad teams we're going up against. As everyone at this point has won at least three games. The round of 64, I mean. Everyone's won at least three games. There's no three teams left in this tournament. And I feel that even with their ward positioning, is a bit too... lax. They don't really have the map control needed to counter this kind of ganking lineup that Nature's Prophet uh, NP can uh, pull out. Yeah, and speaking of map control and their lack of, they just have zero. They finally placed down one sentry ward because, well, they understood that the ancients, they aren't stacking itself. But now, oh, Batter, he's gonna go down probably with the Malphite is helping out. There's the black hole committed just for that one kill. And it is probably worth it because just delaying the level 6s, delaying the blink daggers or boots of travel, just the core items. 
for the side of Dream Destroyers is the way to just go, because that buys a lot of space for the Morphin to farm up. Well, not only are you uh, delaying that, but also Enigma doesn't... People often hold on to the black hole on Enigma very early in the game, but unless you go and go against a death ball strategy, an early uh, black hole just isn't useful. As in, there's very few team fights going on at that point, meaning the most you're going to be able to catch it on is three heroes, and that's only if your opposing team like oh, Moonmeander Dale finds him, activates his stampede. Actually, ring around the rosy Moonmeander double edge. Oh, he jukes, jukes as hard as he possibly can. Dale, oh, he gets the last right click as Patrick comes in. He's probably going to get the counter kill, and yeah, Viper helps out with the Viper strike, just kiting Dale around. Well, a kill for kill Tinker still loses a lot. At least he got boots of speed. But eight, almost nine minutes in, only having boots of speed, soul ring, and in all talisman. It's not a place you want to be at. The Tinker currently is eight in his uh, in the current net worth charts. He is being beaten by the Sand King right now, and and the Scent, the Centaur who uh, had a lane against the Viper. Well, to be honest, the Sand King has his blink dagger now, so that is a form of comeback, or at least potential one, for Dream Destroyers. If they can just go around, start setting up kills, get some more XP on the support. Shadow Shaman, of course, once it's at level 6, you can potentially go for towers as well. So they have the comeback methods, but man, there's a Hand of Midas on the Morphling, and this Morphling, he's gonna become a huge issue in the late game. Yeah, and this is going to be interesting to see, because we have saw Dream Destroyers, they've been destroying Dreams left, right and centre. But now this is where the true challenge comes from. They've fallen behind. Do they have the tenacity as a, as a team to bring this back, to have the self... Uh, basically the ability to uh, discipline themselves, that's the word I'm looking for. Discipline themselves in order to uh, keep this into a possibly winnable game. Well, if they want to do it, I think they have to do it rather sooner or just turtle with all their might and have the Tinker just wreck late game, although it's gonna be extremely hard, especially since the Skyrath Mage, he's off to such a great start already, and he can just go on blowing up heroes left and right, and so he activates his face boots, trying to escape from Baraban, of course, he will be successful, but uh, if he ever gets caught, he might go down, although... Important to note out is that Paraban actually doesn't have a single point into his ultimate yet. Actually now just puts one there. The silence comes out as well. Will there be a slow from the concussive shot with the Mystic Fair to follow? Mystic Fair, he gets the kill as Bendy comes in just one second too late with that blink epicenter bear of drive. He does get the return kill, but at the same time, again, he required the ultimate to be popped off and he required him to basically spend the time to get what should be a one versus one kill. And that Viper, he was, you know, the one soul oh, thing going Fisher well. Oh, onto the battery, the waveform to follow up as well. Adaptive strike. No, not skilled up yet. WWE barely gets out. Yeah, that Rider will manage to be able to, be able to escape, but he is close to his blink and being killed there would have been absolutely painful. Yeah, and actually, at least the Centaur... He's still another 600 or so gold away from his own blink tanger. So that is one positive for Dream Destroyers that the initiation actually isn't all that strong yet for MP. But once the blink tanger comes out on the centaur, it's gonna change drastically. Yeah, and it's worth noting that for all the problems that Scent had in his lane because of just how difficult it is to win against a Viper, he has, you know, got a pretty nice farm. He's yeah. actually out farming the uh, Batrider. It's definitely not bad at all at the moment. Last hit twice actually. I mean, four, five heroes are rather even as far as last hits go. Tower wise, dead even as well. No tower has fallen yet. But Morphling, he's looking to remedy that. Pressing the tier 1 tower bottom lane as Patrider comes in. But still no blink dagger and no real way to actually set up the kills. Or if their shaker really wants to come in, they can maybe even set up a kill on the bat. But he is going to be close to it, and he's going to be able to get that deny off, or possibly he's going to have to be super careful if he wants to try and get that deny. Oh, it's... <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. Oh, actually, this Tempeed goes down. They want to get mid lane. The slow is there. Androp, he has his black hole if necessary. Mystic player did some damage, but 
the whole brunt of it wasn't even necessary. A skill secured, Bendy is there in the mid lane though. As they want to defend their tier 1 and, I mean, losing your Viper as well as two tier 1 towers within the span of like one minute. That is something you cannot take as Bendy, he goes in, blinks, Berserk onto Ender P, Bloody Nine is coming in as well. Magic missiles, nope, the mech is there and now Dale gets his own blink dagger, hoof dump to secure the kill on Bloody Nine. And this is going to be an easy mid tower taken down right now. Sent picking that up, being able to get himself more items, but Bat finally picked up his blink dagger. I think we're only missing one blink dagger at the moment right now on Enigma as he went to get that mech first. Yeah, mech just such a great item, especially if you are actually trying to go for the early pushes as well as oh Morphling. He has the invis rune. Oh, he's taking so much damage from the March of the Machines. I mean otherwise it would have been just easy way for Mover Moon Meander to get a kill. But the March of the Machines actually preventing even an invis hero to get the gank on you. Yes, that's going to be well, we do see 11 to 4 right now oh, in favor. Moonmander, Fisher, Dale, Hoof Tom, Double H, but oh! The counter blink into the lasso. So, Centaur, he's going to be the sacrificial lamb once again. Blink, Burrow Strike, Ether Shock by Bloody Nine, and Bendy gets the kill. But Bendy already has his blink dagger, so the kills aren't all that important on him, I think. Yeah, at this point, uh, Scent can basically do whatever he wants, as in he he doesn't need any more items. Yes, uh, a bit more tankability, yes, a bit more damage would be nice. But at the same time, he doesn't, you know, desperately require it in the same way that Tinker does. And trading a one-for-one -one for that Tinker is actually extremely worth it. Has just look at his items, or his lack of them. It's so sad. As top lane Master Bird Wars get deployed, TPs are coming in, though. They want to defend this. But yeah, coming back to the Tinker, well, he has his bottle as well, so some gold was put towards that. And well, he needs another 1k gold. The stack's still getting blocked. The Radiant side MP, they've been so adamant about just popping down this sentry every single time, preventing Moon Meander from just getting those perfect ancient stacks, getting that farm. And I mean, 14 minutes in, I think within the past six months, that is going to be probably the slowest boot of travels I have seen. Yeah, but I would say that that's actually the slowest in a while, and he's still not near it. He still can get ganked as he, you know, they have finally been able to stop the uh, creep stacks, uh, the ancient uh, blocking. But at the same time, he's only getting one stack at a time. He's not getting the farm he needs. He's level nine. If we have a quick look at current levels, if I try and actually pick the right thing, he is, he's in fact only the sixth highest. No, seventh lowest, highest uh, he level here in the game. So I'm trying to get my words right. He's got not levels. Me speak English. <laughs> and well, I mean, just looking at the XP, XP graph from that, it's around 6,000 and climbing a little bit for MP. Of course, they did have Enigma in a jungle. So that, of course, boosted. Gold graph, it used to be 6,000 or so, dropped down a little bit, but still solid 4,000 or so. And that means MP, they are in the driver's seat, but can they actually keep up, up the pressure? Yep, it's worth noting that during all this is happening, all this action, Morphling is currently 1-0-1-1. One, 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 oh, the, the force that from Skyrock Mage, slow down waveform as well. And of course the amplification of the Ancient Seal did so much, but mid lane, there's the epicenter, black hole on to three years, where is he casting it from? Oh my god, the Echo Slam to follow up, it was absolutely beautiful, it's bloody nine, he's probably gonna fall as well. Epleto might be falling down in return, Enzo wants to chase him down, Mass Serpent Wars helping out a little bit, nope, there's the Malphite coming out. But under the Mass Serpent Wars, it's not the place for you to fight, but man, did you see where the Enigma was casting his hole from? Did it up from the high ground, nothing they could do. Scarath Mage picks up Viper on the end, and that is going to be a full team wipe at 70 to 6. I was just about to go say that Morphling wasn't doing very much, but just look at his farm, and well, he's got two more kills, What? and he's still the highest farmer in the game with 8k net worth. And, and this, this fight was just a minute. absolutely berserk. First, killing off the Tinker uh, top lane, and then even getting the team fight mid lane. Just absolutely sick, and of course, black hole into Echo Slam. And this Echo Slam was just not a blink, not anything, just completely run into it because black hole disabled anybody anyway, everybody anyway. And that's a pipe also finished on Android P. So, even if the epicenter comes out, it's most likely not going to be enough. At this point, I'm not quite sure what Dream Destroyers can do, especially after losing that team fighters. They've just given basically a pipe to the opposing team, like you noticed, and that means that the 
possible combat mechanic of hitting that uh, epicenter, oh, taking everyone out. Parabando. Yeah, just Viper Strike. Actually, yeah, Viper Strike was used there. So, small victories. That's exactly what they have to look forward to. And oh, do we see the Boots of Travels? Yes, the Boots of Travels recipe flying to Moon Meander. Will this be the changing, the turning point in this game? 17 minutes in for the Boots of Travel, it's, it's not good enough on the Tinker. As it, and that's the problem I was about to say, that their late game is this Tinker. The Viper can kind of carry through the mid game. Oh, Bendy, who stopped double as well. They use the Stampede, Fisher to follow up. Adaptive Strike to secure the kill before he gets Burrow Strike out. Just beautiful execution. Now they even want to, to defend the bottom lane. Will it be enough to deal? He is there, Blink is available. Oh, he gets Blinked, initiated upon himself. Viper Strike up onto Airplat as well. The Fisher is there, Dale somehow still alive. They are trying to chase him down, at least the bat rider is, but Eplet is coming in as well. Ether shock, oh Eplet, oh don't run into there. And Hex onto NRP as well, Mech pipe still there as, oh my god, bat rider Malphite stopped him and Eplet, he didn't even die. And I thought he's down for sure and now they're gonna chase for more Baraban, he has his ultimate ready. Concussion shot on cooldown, bloody nine, he's on the run, might go down, Mech gets pop and RP, will use the pipe as well, bloody nine. He goes down, Malphite's onto Enso, Moonmender is back, march to the machines, they don't really want to run into it. As Enso, no, he can't go in for anything either, as bloody nine gets one kill, Moonmender, he's going to chase down on the wrong side of Dale, he's on the wrong side of the Fisher, the double H wasn't there, Moonmender actually gonna get out thanks to that same Fisher. A little bit of misplay there coming out from the uh, Earthshaker, but at the same time, even after all of that, that was still in favor of Team NP, as I think that was in the end a 2 for 1. Oh, oh man, Paravan, the damage coming out from him, and he's going for a Dagon now. He has the Force Death already, has his stuff of Wizardry, and an Alt Talisman from before. So, if he gets a Dagon, boosted out by the Ancient Seal, it's just heroes blown up left and right. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, but while this is happening, the Morphling, he's just sat in the corner and farming. As it, he's got a few kills, as in, but really he's got 111 last hits. He's the highest farm in the game by far. He's just sitting there happy and he's going to be hitting that super carry stage in the next 5 or 10 minutes. And I don't see Dream Destroyers turning this around the next uh, 5 or 10 minutes. Well, they are trying to do their best. Going for Roshan at the moment. It's not the fastest, even with the double damage on end, so even Mass Serpent Wars are helping out. But it looks to be a safe one anyway, because there's no vision for MP at all. And actually, they only have one Observer Ward down, which is spotting out the Batrider farming up this delicious double stack. But even with the Rosh, with the Aegis, is this going to make a huge impact? I mean, last fight, we didn't even see a black hole or anything, and it was rather spread out by the side of MP. They were the ones deeping in to defend while the Mass Serpent Wars were already down. And, and oh, oh, Moon Meander, bye bye. He just gets nuked down once again, got caught out. That Scarlet Mage coming in from behind, and well, that pincer movement just making his life a misery. He's currently, I think he's the highest death in the game right now. Yeah, with nil, eight, and five. He's got no kills, eight deaths, and five assists. He's died more than everyone else on the in the game right now. If you want to pick a Tinker, you have to be sure to actually protect him. Either be it with Ward Vision or just giving him maybe even safe lane farm. Because, I mean, yes, Viper safe lane, he did extremely well against the Centaur. But since your Tinker was struggling so hard, it probably was not worth the laning situation. And I think the Tinker, Moonmeander, he was probably not experienced in that exact mid matchup up against this Hyrof Mage, so he didn't really know what to expect, I think. Yeah, as in it's not a common matchup as generally, if you're playing Skyrath Mage in pubs, he he's very rarely picked up in that mid-roll uh, for public games. And it is an issue that uh, Moonminder is a very good player, very high MMR, but at the same time his, uh, he is mostly a, a pub star, so to say. And it does mean that when teams come out with the strategies that are generally reserved for uh, competitive games, it often can catch them out by surprise. Oh yeah, and well... At least he has his blink dagger now, which actually makes the Tinker a lot stronger. But also Paraban has his level 1 Dagon. PKB is being worked on both Dale as well as Android P. Both only need the recipe for it. And now 
It looks like Dream Destroyers, they are grouping up. If they get the jump, if they get the nice lasso initiation with the force step also on the bad rider, they can maybe set something up for about. Oh, there's the hex coming out. Check us to follow up. Oh, the echo slam with the fisher. Hoofed up to fall on to. They even use the stampede. They kill one. And now Mech is there with the pipe tail. He's healthy as a horse. And now Enzo. He might be going down. Oh, there's the AP center burst like as well. Andrew AP. He can't even get this black hole off or rather. He casted it for just one millisecond as it is a one for two. Aegis gets popped. Now Dale, he comes in with a nice hoof dump, but now Enzo he actually gets the counter kill. So in the end, a two for two, but I guess with the Aegis also going down, it's still favoring MP a little bit. Yeah, they did get the Aegis down, but they did manage to... Uh, well, it's mostly equal, but they want to initiate again, but both of them initiate into each other at the same time. Oh man, Ben, he just... Fisher death as Enzo slowed down as well. Baraban, does he have enough Ancient Sealies there? Of course, magic missiles. Oh, Moon Meander might get away. No. Ghost Scepter on Morphling. In fact, I will say that in this game, the Ghost Scepter might hurt him a little bit more than uh, he is intending. As Although the Tinker, he hasn't been having the greatest game. If he gets those levels, it can do a whole bunch of damage. As this, those wards are going to come out looking to take down this last tier 1 tower in the game. Should have picked this up nice and easily. Yeah, they will get it initially. And so... With his tower going down, he will almost have 20 more gold, and that's his Agony Scepter now. So actually, that's a pretty nice pickup. You can spam it out, just completely kite around the center war runner. But then he will have his PKB in only 70 gold. Android P needs another 900 or so. But once the PKBs come out, there is nothing at all to stop the back hole except the lasso. But you have to come in from such a great angle to actually not get sucked into the black hole at the same time. And I'm, I'm also going to say that while we saw Scarath Mage beat Tinker Mid and he did a brilliant job there, the real impressive thing I'm seeing right now is the initiations coming out from Centaur Warner. He's just hitting them like a truck filled with bricks. And he's currently 8, 5, and 3 after having possibly the worst start in, you can have in Dota. Yeah, and actually, I mean, speaking of bad starts, the Tinker network wise, he almost has the same farm as the Skyrath does, so he's actually been doing a pretty decent enough job and just catching up and of course that's exactly what the Tinker does, he just goes from lane to lane, marches the machines, get easy gold, doesn't really have to put himself in danger once he gets the blink dagger to blink into trees, but then again, on the same note, Tinker, he just takes up so much resources on the map and nobody else from her team can really farm efficiently as oh Morphling, he wants to chase down Moon Meander in this bottom lane, he doesn't have a shotgun though anyway. And will replicate into the mid lane now. One more second. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. And even worse than that, as in you're saying, Tinker's oh, almost the same as the Enzo, he used the stampede. There's the Mystic Flare, just Enzo. Viper blown up. 60 seconds on the sideline. No buyback. But there's the epicenter coming in. It does absolutely nothing. So they have very little left to actually defend the high ground apart from the March of the Machine. Yeah, but it is very difficult to take down a, uh, a high ground of a Tinker. So it looks like they're just going to go for this last tier 2 instead. But you were saying that the Tinker's almost the same net worth as the Scarath Mage, which might be true, but that's not really the one he's competing against. I think the Scarath Mage right now, he doesn't need any more farm. He's kind of moving back in terms of picking up those resources. It is the Morphling he's got to worry about. Oh, shotgun! Actually, waveform, not even necessary as Fisher was enough. But the shotgun, they just have a ridiculous amount of magic damage. And oh now, Batrider gets caught, the Dagon is there as well, they need a little bit more Echo Slam committed to it. Kill secured, and Batrider, well, he has buyback at least. And that is going to be another kill coming out as Dream Destroyers are just getting destroyed, picked off moment by moment as NP are just doing a really good job of just keeping control and squeezing out the advantage that they, they gained in that uh, early game and just making sure that they can't come back into this. Oh yeah, well, the tower going down to half HP. Now Enzo comes in with the Viper Strike. Paraban actually has to escape, as does Android P. Moon Miller keeps on spamming the rockets. As oh, Morphling. You could see he wants to go for the shotgun, but a little bit too risky. Android P, though, has his PKB now, has the black hole ready, completely full mana. Pipe and Mech, though, are on cooldown. But with the blink initiations, they might set up an easy kill still. Yeah, if they can get the initiation. Oh, blink the Fisher on. onto two. That's the initiation. The who? Oh, actually, who? Shotgun not there. Burst strike out as well. Morphling dropping really low in the mass serpent. Where's he strike to strength morph up? Will it be enough? The last so is there as well. Somehow still alive, but he doesn't have a waveform and he goes down finally. Moon Manor actually gets the kill. 800 gold for him. Dale dropping low as well. Mech comes out as. Bad Rider wants to chase them down. Bendy comes in with a burst strike and now Epplet. Fisher. Oh, and so 30 HP. 
Oh no, he's gonna get away probably. Heat seeking missions flying out as well. Applet, he's still on the run. He's dropping low as Andre P. He PKP up, goes for the black hole, but there's no damage follow up. There's the Mystic Fair finally coming out. Moonmander goes down. They got into WWD. He goes down to the Arcane Bolt. So in the end, it wasn't a massive disaster for MP, but that fight did not go the way they were expecting it to. No, we just saw that Morphling, he wanted that kill on Sand King and he, he just saw blood. The vi his vision turned red and he didn't quite understand that the rest of the team was there waiting for him to jump up and strength gain is good but not quite TI2 levels of overpowered. Oh yeah, it's just... I was actually just completely baffled by how long he did manage to stay alive. In the end, the Moon Miller came in, just gave that little notch with that laser of his. Got a lot of gold from it as well, and so he's closing, or getting closer at least, to his hex at least, but it's still a pretty long while away. And MP, I don't think they will wait as long and be generous enough to just allow the Tinker to farm up his ship. Yeah, right now we do see that the gold advantage, it has kind of leveled off a bit after that second series of team fights, but it's still at plus 15k. That is, you know, a lot of gold. Currently, Team NP are the 1%. They're also the 1% in terms of experience, as they've got about a 17k lead in that regard. They've got all the towers apart from the last tier 2. Well, it's... What do you actually think that Dream Destroyers can do, man? Yes, they can turtle for sure, with just having the threat of the epicenter as well as the March of the Machines laid down. It's but... mostly the... It's mostly turtling and hoping and taking advantage of mistakes that uh, NP can do. Oh. If they can take advantage of the mistakes, if they can get a few more team fires like the one they had there, maybe they can start moving out from the map. But right now, they can't go for a fair 5 on 5 engagement just because of how farmed everyone is. This Morphling, he's got all the items he wants. Yeah, and there's even a blink dagger on Android P now. So it makes the initiation for the black hole that much easier. And well, like we talked about already, he has the black hole anyway. I mean, the BKB that is. Yeah, Black Hole is on cooldown though at the moment, so for another 70 seconds, maybe Dream Destroyers can try to pick a fight, but there's also a Blink Dagger on Skyrath Mage, and well, four Blink Daggers on the side of NP, three <laughs> Blink Daggers on Dream Destroyers. And the... Uh, and the waveform. There's a lot of mobility as Blink Daggers, with that change that was done a few patches ago, with that to minus mon um, removal of the mana cost. He's, the Blink Daggers have basically become an amazing item. It's almost gone back to really old school Dota times, back before there was that 3 second cooldown of taking damage, where it was literally brought on every single hero ever. I mean, that, that just... I don't even know what they were thinking when they did that, to be honest. It's like, guys, uh, just Blink Daggers all around. Endless Blink Daggers as long as you have mana for it, more or less. Yeah, then it was a case of... Uh, Back then, there was crazy stuff in Dota, uh, Dota 1 lands, I'd say. As you could even buy Asians at one point, if I remember. Yeah, it, it had three charges as well or something, I think. Or, I'm not even too sure. I think Roshan's Aegis had three charges at some point, but they oh, Actually, Fisher Roshan blinked in and that got stomped by Roshan himself, but... At least, Bloody Nine, he's trying to make something happen on the map. Mass Serpent works into the mid lane, but we see Dale just teeping back a tanky hero who can really just... Soak up the Mass Serpent Wards and farming them up. As Roshan, actually it's not that fast at all. It's going pretty damn slow. Actually they used the Replicate of the Center War Runner to tank up as well. And if you're wondering like why Illusions usually blow up, it's when you try to attack Roshan, that's when they blow up. But with the just move command, you just put them in front of Roshan and do it. Fisher comes out as- Oh, they go in! Oh, the Aegis it gets snatched! Oh my god, beautifully done. Actually Aegis immediately popped as well. But that was well worth it. They're getting... Basically, they they nullified that uh, Roshan apart from the Golden Experience. At this point in the game, the Golden Experience isn't worth that much. But they're going in for the initiation. Bloody Nine, they're going to get out with a stomp. Taking out three. Scarlet Mage Ultimate just doing so much damage. And so getting destroyed. And that's going to be a quick buyback coming out from Bat uh, Batrider. He's still got his last Uber. Can they defend this? It's a three versus five. And this was just beautifully done there, even though it was a little bit hectic and, well, we didn't even see a black hole, but I think it still was a Freeman man hoof thump. At least it caught two. Fisher, of course, setting it up to begin with. And overall, I actually want to say that Eplet on the Earthshaker, he's been having such a great game all game long. Yes, some Fishers have caught heroes on the wrong side, but 
That is just inevitable. It happens f to absolutely every single player. As in all of the, all these players on NPA have been playing amazingly. As in the only ones who really haven't had a chance to shine would be uh, Android and Enigma. And uh, hi, please, uh, thanks, bye. On uh, Morphling. And that's not because they've been playing badly, but it's simply because of the work the other players on their team has been doing means that they don't need to turn up. I think Morphling, he just needs to keep farming and make sure he wins oh, late game. Oh, Shotgun Fisher! Oh my god. He does something like that. If you just get to that point and then, so now he TPs in, and he gets slowed down by the Viper Serpent, and so... He has actually pretty damn tanky as Morphling. He does a lot of damage, but is it gonna be enough Viper? He's man fighting the Morphling. Oh no, Mystic Fair Fisher. It's not a man fight when the team comes in. PKB activated the Morphling just before the lesso, so he doesn't take too much damage at all. Moon Meander tries to come in, march the machines, he's down as well. They gets the kill. Oh, I saw the Echo Slam. Was it a nobody? He wanted to blink. He wanted to blink Echo Slam, but the blink cut disabled. Well, it's now a two versus five. The rats are going down. The, ba the Bat Rider was a dieback, meaning he's going to be down for another 50 seconds, and I think this may be a rat go at least another set of racks going down, and there's nothing they can do. Yeah, well, the turtle just isn't strong enough when you're so far behind as a team. 25k gold, gold now, nearing 30k XP already. And well, oh, Dale, he blinks in, gets the stun onto Bloody Nine, and Paravan helps out a little bit, but there's the epicenter coming out, Morphling! They all go down, two heroes on the sidelines. So it's gonna be one set of racks for the time being, or is it buybacks by the Morphling? Well, he had boots of travel, so he's immediately back. They get the range racks, going for melee next. Yeah, they're just using that uh, Earth Shaker to just use that uh, Enchant Totem damage, knocking it down, and this is gonna be another set of racks, and that buyback was most definitely worth it to get that. It looks like I'm gonna go take down the Tinker, the stunts are coming out. Can he get the shotgun? No, he can't. Oh, it's a dieback from the Morphling. Potentially, he's strength morphing up. No, he goes down to Moon Meander's lasers in the end. I mean, if Dream Destroyers can now somehow, within the 100 seconds that the Morphling is down, go push in. Actually, oh, nice blink out by Enigma just before Bendy catches him with the burst strike. But they have to push now. Actually, they find Android P. They get the hex from Moon Meander, who just bought it as well. And Enigma probably gonna go down. Activate his pipe mech, but there's no running away from this. Nope, he's just trying to delay it as much as he can. Will get taken out, but at the same time, two sets of racks are going down. This is so difficult to push against, and they've got two sets of towers and the fortification link to go up against, and the sensors come back up. They've got 60 seconds to make something happen. Can the Dream Destroyers keep their dream alive of getting to the round of 32, or will they be falling down to team another's prospectors? Oh, wow. This, <laughs> this was so crazy at the moment. The heat seeking missiles were following the Earthshaker. He blinked out from it just before it hit him and started deeping out. But he didn't blink into the trees, but he blinked into the ancients. So ancients started hitting him, and Bendy somehow got vision of him and Burrow striked him to death. I mean, Earthshaker was so close to escaping there. And now 30 more seconds actually. Do they have mass support wars? Yes, they do. They might get tracks from this if they play it correctly. But in the meantime, we do see on this top lane, they're gonna have to be super careful. Tinker is gonna be able to take that out and defend. As the fortification is gonna get popped. Ten, Ten more, more seconds, seconds before Enigma, yeah. He's just going for boots of trials on his own as well. And he will have buyback even if he comes in and dies now. But the threat of a black hole, I guess it won't be quite tracks because apart from the mass serpent worth nothing helped out, but Dale, he wants to go in the fisher actually a little bit off target. And so gonna get slowed down the use of as well, Dale. Can you get your blink up? No, oh, the Viper Strike just before the Hoofton Bug and RP is there to help out with the Malphites. They should be able to chase him down. Midnight Pulse is there. They have the Hoofton, Enchant Totem, and yeah, and so he is pretty damn tanky, but falls down in the end anyway. With Dagons all around on that uh, Scarlet Mage. In fact, a level 4 Dagon. We haven't been able to mention that right now, but. Well, that's kind of what happens when you have a Scarlet Mage who did just so well as he did on that middle lane. He's got so much burst ability. And it's I me. Mean, whoever gets Ethereal Blade by the Morphling and Dagon did the face, how do you survive? I guess if you Tinker, he himself has a level 1 Dagon now. He has 1.5k HP, so he's not as squishy as you might maybe think. Actually, Shadow Shaman is the squishiest with 1.4k HP, I think. But oh, never mind, Bat Rider is a little bit squishier, but still, one full shotgun with the waveform on top will be enough as they go for the last set of racks.
And they just want to end oh, it Oh, the AP Center, but the pipe comes out just before Dale. He gets the last up, but the shotgun is there on the battle. Order. There is the Mystic player as well, Dale. Someone still alive with PKB activated. They used the Stampede. And I can't believe not a single hero went down as Moon Meander might get the kill on Dale. Yes, just before his own demise. But, man, the initiation, it looked good for Dream Destroyers, but the pipe, Android P, nice reactions. And the GGs are going to get called, and sadly, the fan favorites are going to get uh, taken out in the round of 64. This has been Banshee casting on Hevlet TV with Kusha. I'll let him sound his off out as we just saw NP. I feel that DD, they just didn't give them enough respect, and they got punished early and never really made themselves, uh, brought themselves back into the game. Yeah, Really just shutting down the Tinker early on was the key factor in this. And of course, I think the draft overall, Dream Destroyers, the two previous games we saw them, they just went not 100% Death Ball push, but pretty damn close to it with Shadow Shaman, Death Prophet, even Pog 9 one game. But when they didn't get their heroes, when those got banned out, they just went for like almost a solo core Tinker. Yes, they had the Battle Rider and the Viper, but... They knew that if it goes to the late game, it's going to be extremely hard and Nova's potential, they took advantage of that. But guys, this is not it as we have one more round as well. I guess we're going to follow Nova's potential if we can. And if you like this, be sure to follow us on this channel as well as Hefla TV 2 and Hefla Mook if you want to see more content from us, at least English content. And of course, our social media to know when we're going live. Hefla TV on Facebook, Twitter and VK for the Russian viewers. And of course, if you really want to support us, you can either subscribe to get some cool emotes, which you can use in all Twitch chats, of course. Yeah, and... I've actually been seeing a few people use a 322. Oh yeah, 322. It's best, bro. It's best. Everyone wants that one. It's shiny. And shiny means good. Indeed it does. And of course, guys, just stick around as we go to the last round of this tournament, hopefully. Or last round today for the tournament to find out which teams actually do qualify themselves for the main event tomorrow. But yeah, just a few songs as we look for the next matchup.